You're watching Higher Things Video Shorts with me, Pastor Chris Hall. If you're looking for an easy way to support Higher Things, remember to like, share, and subscribe. Also hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any Higher Things content. You can follow Higher Things on social media and our website over at www.higherthings.org. If you love what we're doing in Higher Things, we ask that you remember us in your donations and prayers. Welcome to Forgiveness Friday. Today, we are covering a sin that I am very proud about. Well, it's pride. That was bad, wasn't it? I'll stop with the jokes eventually. Don't worry. They'll eventually one day be gone. Just uh, not today. Pride. Is it sinful to be prideful about something? Like if you clean your mom or dad's car really well and you're proud about it and you go in and you want to show it off. Or if you get an A on that paper you worked really hard on, wouldn't it be nice if people talk about it? Or, you know, let, let's say you lost weight. You, you, you commit, you do the time, you eat salads, which no one wants to do anytime and this is just a side note besides the pride thing. If anyone ever tells you, I had the most amazing salad yesterday, don't believe anything that person ever says to you. It's all lies. There's never an amazing salad. It's a salad. It's just a salad. But let's say you've done that. You've eaten the salad. You've worked out. You've watched what you eat. And you've lost like 75 pounds. You're proud about it. Would anyone ever get you for being prideful? Well, what is pride? Pride is a self-centered thing. Remember the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. Pharisee stood up in front of everybody and prayed thus, Lord, I thank you I'm not like other people. I tithe of everything I get. I fast twice a week. Thank you that I'm not like extortioners, adulterers, or like this tax collector over here. But then the tax collector standing far off just pounded his chest saying, God, cover me in your righteousness, for I am the sinner. Yes, pride is sinful because we're thinking we have something worthy in and of ourselves. There's something we do that is worth honoring. Another word for pride that sometimes can be interchanged is word arrogance. An arrogant person. That we have no problem saying is sinful if someone's arrogant, if they walk in as if they're smarter than everybody, stronger than everybody. They are God's gift to creation. An arrogant person, we have no problem saying that's sinful. But pride, it is. And we have pride in many things, not just pride in ourselves, but in our, our favorite baseball team, our, our favorite band, movie, our country, whatever it may be. Pride is sinful because it's self-focused and that's just the nature of sin so does jesus forgive pride is pride a sin that jesus assumed on the cross well, yes i know i say this each week everyone's like oh no he said it. yeah of course it is it is a sin that jesus assumed on the cross and how did he assume it by being humble humble is the opposite of pride humble is being humiliated and how is Jesus humiliated? By being the sinner. The law found him to be the only sinner. He is the committer of every sin. Not that he himself did it, but he assumed the responsibility of every sin. And on the cross, he is humiliated, humbled, and the finger is pointed at him, and the law says, you are the sinner. Jesus doesn't say, no, no, look at my clean track record. Look at my honoring of mom and dad. Look at me living a chaste life. Look at me doing all these things in a righteous way. Jesus doesn't speak this way when the crowd calls for Barabbas instead of him. Instead, Jesus opens not his mouth except to cry out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why have you forsaken me, God? Why am I the one that's cast out? He is the sinner. He is the one that in humble glory, I know that sounds weird to talk about, humble glory gave up his life on the cross for us, that our pride may be put down, that our pride may be drowned and die 
with all selfish desires, that we may walk humbly with Christ in the forgiveness of our sins. Because the biggest problem with pride is that it denies forgiveness. It says, I have nothing that needs to be forgiven. But the law comes in and says, well, there's a lot. We're humiliated by it, that we may be forgiven. For that is how God works. He humbles that he may exalt. He is the one that exalts us. And Christ does this in holy absolution. He exalts us and sits us next to himself. He, we don't sit at the head of the table. We're at the bottom and he brings us up in holiness. So pride is sinful. And yet pride is the reason Christ came and died for us. That our pride may be gone that it may be forgotten, that it may be yesterday's news, that we may receive in meekness the implanted word which is able to save our souls, as St. James says. The word that absolves us and comforts us in the assurance that all sins, no matter what they are, are forgiven in Christ, which includes those moments of pride. So take heart, my friends, and may you be granted humility all your days. Humility that clings to Jesus' cross alone and rests in him unceasing, that you may have no pride, <laughs> but may just rejoice in all the good things Christ gives to you. So take heart. You are forgiven, and you are loved by your Lord forever. God bless you all. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.